From the day that the doctor said it's a boy, Corey was my best friend. I'm Kelsey McGregor. These are my parents, Brenda McGregor and Kevin McGregor, and this is the story of my brother, Corey. He was a great brother. Um, they got along extremely well. People could not believe it. There was two and a half years difference, and uh, they had their little squabbles, but even when he was little as the big brother, he always looked out for his sister. And uh, we did everything together, right? From him coming to work with me at a young age to um, his love for Spider-Man and uh, <laughs> going to the movies and watching Spider-Man um, right up through the hockey. This is my first birthday video. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, my first birthday party. He took it out. I don't, I'm going to you play. And it's not even in. <laughs> Jesus. <sighs> Holy. I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing wrong. The funniest thing is we have this photo and you're not even looking at me and it's my birthday. You're like staring at Corey, like <laughs> my boy and it's my first birthday. We have it's, that. We told him to smile. We have that photo somewhere. Oh, he's so cute. Isn't that Zeppelin though? Yeah, he's a little sad. Hey, who's this? Corey? Corey? I think looking back, he was always involved in sports, team sports at school, um, in a rep hockey league, had a great group of family and friends that we associated with. And I think, and he did a little bit of refing after that, but I think that was a turning point when he stopped. I think since he was in such a year then going into college where, yeah, it's a really happy, fun time, but it's also a really stressful time, being away from home for the first time, you know, dealing with grades and like being a 19 year old, 20 year old guy, like you just don't necessarily want to say, oh, I want to talk about how, why I'm feeling stressed or what's bothering me. This just became the thing that, you know, helped him. And I believe the first thing that he ever tried was Oxycontin and he wasn't one of his first friends to do it. You know, he was kind of witnessing his friends do it and I think they were using it very recreationally. Corey says to me like he had tried other things and when he tried that for the first time, it was like something clicked in him. So this journal is the journal that my brother kept when he was in rehab for his 28 days um, and just keeps a different passage of notes, thoughts, exercises, poems, all within here. Need to get over my low self worth, putting the past behind me and accepting that the drugs aren't me. You know, I listened to a podcast and the, the psychologist said the only time a person with an addiction chooses is the first time. Mm -hmm. After that, it's not their choice. And that really resonated with me and helped me to understand. And I think that's what people, it's like, well, they chose this path. No, they did not. And that like they chose, that he chose this, you know, over his family and over his son. And it, it just couldn't be further from the truth. You know, he, we, Zeppelin especially, and us and Shelby, Ethan, we were everything to him. And, you know, we weren't, we were, we were still that loving family and it, you know, there wasn't some issue, we weren't a broken, like it, people just really, I think, started to look at us differently and, and 
there's just a lot of still judgment surrounding the topic and you know it was really hard to watch my parents go go through that and just having to hide and keep it a secret for for so long and the difference if it was something else how how open we would have been because we have such a close relationship with family and friends mm -hmm. and just knowing how much it would have made a difference since you know some people would have absolutely been there no judgment there mm -hmm. to support but you just don't know who's going to think about that in another way and and what that would change and so Corey just thought it was best to keep this a secret until he was better but he needed support even beyond us yeah he needed it. Why do I relapse? Not used to feeling everything. Regrets of everything I've done. Easy access. Not talking to someone. Not happy with my life, even though I am grateful. Ten plus years, so brain is wired. Shame, guilt, knowing the feeling. Oh, this is the photo I was talking about, Dad, where you're staring at Corey <laughs> on my first birthday. That must have been cool. He's so, so little, little there. I know, eh? That was, the, he came home for Christmas. Oh my gosh, so tiny. Hmm. I'll never forget this moment as long as I live. Um, it wasn't really until this last year that we were fully brought into the loop and were able to then um, try to help him manage it. And uh, I think that from his journals and from talking to him, it was a huge weight lifted off once it was all out there. And, um, you know, and then there was the struggle of the resources and trying to find those resources and um, the waiting and, you know, a person has the courage to come forward and ask for help and want the help and then to be told that, you know, eight months, you know, we'll call you in eight months and we'll get you into a program. It's just, it's inconceivable to me and it just, um, you know, we wouldn't have had those eight months with him. There's, you know, no doubt in my mind if he didn't get the help then. Fortunate enough, we had access to means. I mean, um, I can't even imagine people that want to help and they, they can't. They just financially can't and they have to wait for programs that are, um, you know, just overpopulated right now. There's just not enough. I think that's the hardest thing for us too because there was so much hope at the end, it was just too late. Um, he just, it was too delayed. And um, if he could have gotten support sooner and longer you know people unfortunately get sick with many different illnesses and you see it on Facebook you see it on newspaper articles um, you know I know you're having this tough battle with cancer and all these people are pouring in you know I got a hundred messages saying stick in there you know keep fighting where we're thinking about you and we just you know you think we got thinking after the funeral and all the messages and how people and teachers and parents and um, all kinds of people, what they thought of him and friends, if he just had a, had that support, if you could just put, if he was just comfortable enough saying, just got out of rehab, trying to do my best and had a hundred people sitting there saying, you can, you, know, you can do it, Corey, you can do it. We know you can do it. We're behind you. Well, and the thing is too, I don't like the word addict. I like person with an addiction because he was much more than the addiction. He was a wonderful human being and that's what he needs to be remembered for, not somebody that had a drug addiction. And I don't know, for me that's important. From the <laughs> that first part, eh? I know. From the day the doctor said it's a boy, Corey was my best friend. Being in the trades, he automatically became my little helper. Corey would help me at countless job sites over the years. Nothing was better than working side by side with him. What does happiness mean to me? A job I enjoy? Being with my kid? a house with property. <laughs> Come 
a good circle of friends and social life. Being able to be selfless and help others. Having a positive outlook on life. Good relationship with my family. I forgive you, mother. I can hear you. Cor lacked like a lot of love for himself. And I think he really wanted to prove to himself and to everyone that he could get better. And he then wanted to help others get better. As tough as this conversation has been today at moments, um, it's we want to encourage people to come forward and talk with no judgment and be vulnerable and open and honest and and give hope. I love you, Corey, and I will miss my partner. And I, I promise to take care of your girls and see. <laughs>